So I went to the dentist the other day for my checkup and they told me, wow, Teets, you sure have some pearly whites. I told them that I broke the bad habits I used to have and started taking better care of my teeth. Brushing twice a day, flossing, using mouthwash, stopped installing Rena. So when I sat down to work on this week's video, I figured, hey, why not go over some bad habits that people have in Valorant? So they can rank up from those ugly colors to these shiny colors. So let's get started. To start off our list, we need to talk about the most common ELO destroyer in the entire game, tilt queuing. Seriously, tilt is something that people don't take seriously and affects other games than just Valorant. I did some research and I found this really interesting article written by some pretty smart people that you should really check out. Link in the description. And in this article, they mentioned how tilt is arguably the biggest thing that people have to worry about when playing poker. Just read this paragraph for me. In poker, the term tilt refers to losing control and making detrimental, strategically weak decisions due to negative emotions such as anger or frustration. Typical poker situations that cause tilts include, but are not limited to, 1. Losing a situation where losing is perceivably highly improbable, for example, having a 90% chance of winning a big pot of money but ending up losing it due to some bad chance or bad luck. This is known as encountering a bad beat in the poker community. 2. Prolonged series of losses or losing streaks. And 3. Factors external to the game's mechanics, such as fatigue or needling by other players, which means making provocative or stingy comments. Tilted poker players commonly adopt a suboptimal and overly aggressive playing style, whereby they almost always end up losing surplus amounts of money. This can result in losing one's entire life savings in a single 20 minute session. So, after reading that, does that not sound exactly like Valorant? People lose their life savings tilting in poker, just like people derank hard in Valorant. On the next page, they show this pretty cool graphic that breaks it down pretty simply. And it again fits perfectly into Valorant ranked. Losing a round you shouldn't have makes you upset, like you lost a 5v3, and you try and carry your team out of the mud because you're upset, or you just meet your teammates because you think you're dumb, and then you make more bad decisions, you lose some more, you lose more elo, and now you're sad, but now you want to win it back, so you queue again, which isn't a good idea. Tilt queuing is brushed off by so many people and they don't realize how bad it can take a toll on your rank and mental health. People have the habit of just repeatedly queuing another, hoping that they're just going to win their ELO back. But what they usually end up doing is digging themselves into a hole, feeling even worse, and then just aren't having a good time. So next time you're playing and you're pretty upset, just stop playing the game, do yourself a favor. Go take a break, watch some YouTube, pet your dog, hug your mom, smile, seriously, smile. It is scientifically proven that the mere act of smiling is enough to boost your mood and lower your stress. Whatever you do, just don't play Valorant when you're tilted. And speaking of science and research and all that, if you've ever taken an IQ test, you know that it composes of spatial recognition, short-term memory, mathematical ability, and analytical thinking. All of which are skills needed in some degree in order to play Valorant at various levels. So think about it. If you got the same question or same scenario or same task on the test twice or even three times in a row, you'd start to figure out the answer, if not right away. This also applies to Valorant. If you're doing the same thing round after round, the enemy team is going to start breaking you down and then you're gonna start to lose. And this concept doesn't just apply to Sentinel mains and how they have to constantly change up their setups. This applies to every class. Silva can't throw out the same dart. Sky can't only pop flash. Jet, Reynas, and Chambers shouldn't peak the same angles every round. Owen shouldn't blind the same spot on the side hit because enemies are going to start playing around it. And this does apply to Sentinels. Cyphers and Killjoys shouldn't have their bots and trips in the same spots, otherwise they're going to get pre-fired. There are just way too many utility combos in this game for you to be doing the same exact thing every round. Have Sky flash you out of A main, a dog mid for you, or maybe you can walk down A main one round alongside Sky and play the trade and just keep it quiet. Or maybe your chamber has his ultimate and you guys decide to four push down one one half of the map to force the enemy team into the chamber. Or you guys can flash off of a tripwire or an alarm bot. So next time the enemy does pre-fire you holding A main, don't think that he's cheating, but instead maybe you've been playing that same angle or the same way every round. But if you guys want more detailed guides on how you can combo utility or play each map, we at scocap.com have you covered. We have guys covering a variety of topics from specific agents to literal VOD reviews, all of which are done by Radiant level players. Top 500 players literally show you how to play the game to help you save time and rank up faster. It's almost like it's pay to win. But if you don't rank up while using our service, you're going to get your money back. So if you're looking for the fastest way to climb in Valorant, check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Now, something that we can't really give you guys for is warming up. There are countless ways to warm up before playing Valorant, and each person has their own routine. Maybe it's a little bit of Kovacs, and then the range, and then deathmatch. Or maybe someone just runs a couple of back-to-back -back deathmatches and they feel good to go. Regardless of how you do it, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is if you want to play right. Think about it. In almost every sport or activity in the world, it's a good idea to get warm, stretch, and just get into the flow of things before you start. So why wouldn't esports be the same? 
And it might sound silly, but I don't just mean warming up in the range, in aim trainers, or on your computer at all, really. If you're gaming for hours on end a day, you should be taking care of your body, hands, wrists, fingers, everything. A warm ups get your muscles warm, moving quicker into where they should be. Here's a quick guide I found online. Listen to Dr. Levi, an esports fitness doctor. I recommend you take a five minute break every 60 minutes. Open your hand wide, make a full fist, tabletop fist, claw fist, half fist, and a full fist. Stretch your fingers out. Take your thumb, stretch your thumb back. Stretch each finger back. Take your other hand and bring your fingers back. Extend your fingers back with your elbow straight. Then flex your hand down and gently bring your wrist down. Like Dr. Levi said, there's a lot that goes into warming up before playing games like Valorant. There's a lot more benefits than one might think. And something that Dr. Levi really hates is when you backseat his games. All right, he never said that. But it's a really bad habit that I see way too often at just about every rank. Nothing makes me more irritated than when I'm playing Sage or Raze or Breach and someone's dead and is telling me that, oh, you have res, uh, you you have your paint shells, uh, you, you can stun him. Like, just shut up. Like, just let me play. Holy. And when you're in a high pressure situation and you have little Timmy in the background yelping at you, all it's going to do is create confusion. And the person playing is just going to get more and more flustered and then they're going to lose. And now, don't get me wrong. You can still have a really helpful impact on your games from the spectator spot. Just by letting your teammates know where players were or are, how much health they have, whether or not certain enemies have used their flashes or other pieces of utility, all of this can impact on whether or not you win the round. Or for example, if it's a 1v1, you should tell your team if you saw them and they didn't. In a clutch situation, sometimes people get too dialed in at a certain angle or they think that they have a read, but if you're dead and see like an arm or a shoulder of the enemy that the person playing alive didn't see, definitely tell them. I've said this in some of my previous guides, but you can't control what your teammates do in ranked, but only what you do. So honestly, when trying to work with random teammates, it's often best to just worry about your own gameplay. Throw out bits and pieces of useful info and just say things like nice job or nice try after your teammates die. Telling them how they should have played or if they made the right or wrong decision usually isn't going to help and it just might stir up toxic responses. Now for honestly the most useful tip on this list is that silence can win you so many situations in this game and will catch people by surprise. You have no idea how many times in ranked games where I see people literally knife out sprinting away from a plant site, making all the noise in the world that they're leaving. Like you do know that people can hear you, right? You're just giving away free information to the enemy team that you're leaving. I mean, unless you're trying to bait them, you should be using your shift key a lot more often when you're playing this game. And this doesn't just have to be when you're rotating either. In a 1v1 or any clutch situation, you should be as quiet as much as possible. When double swinging things, be quiet. When taking map control, be quiet. When pushing a spoke, be quiet. If you're making noise, you're telling the opponent where you're at, and if they're there, you're allowing them to line their crosshair for your head, and they're expecting you. If you watch any pro game, you'll see just how quiet they are so often. And noise in this game is such valuable information, and you shouldn't be giving it away for free. Take a look at this round from Cloud9 versus the guard. Even after being down a man, the guard slowly walks up onto site, taking Cloud9 completely by surprise and winning them the round. And then they use Cloud9's Viper Wall to their advantage, and this allows them to burst onto site. There was just no reason to walk here, and they did the right thing. And now, I could show you clips of this happening all the time, but if you watch any pro match, you'll see it for yourself. So next time you're playing, think about the noises that you're making, and how the enemy team could use the information that you're feeding them to help beat you. And for our last tip, some of you guys don't use your minimap nearly enough as you should. This thing in the top left of your screen is such a helpful tool that provides you so much free information that your teammates might not even be giving you. For example, if you see your teammates on bind, peeking down a short and showers, and they see absolutely nothing, then there's a good chance that you're about to get some action over in hookah or be long. Something like a preemptive smoke wouldn't be a bad idea. Or if you're retaking A on split and you're rotating from B, if you look at your minimap and see that your team doesn't have ramp control, it'd be a good idea to coordinate with your team to try and clear that out before worrying about the rest of site. Or in a post plant situation and you're trying to figure out the best way you can play off your teammate. Let's say you notice your teammate near the market door on ascent in a 2v2, so you might come out from backside and hop up on lane so that you can help fight with him or trade him out. Or with initiators, if you're playing Breach, KO, or Sky especially, being able to look at the minimap, figure out what your teammate needs, and being able to give it to them is going to help you out immensely when trying to rank up. For example, maybe you notice your opening garage on Haven in a one and done, and maybe you offer him a flash so that you can take a quick peek and then get out. The minimap offers so much free value that people don't realize, and in my opinion, it goes overlooked. And yes, of course, you shouldn't always be staring at your minimap as it can get you killed, but being able to glance at it and gather info quickly is a skill that most good players are going to want to have. But this was all just one of the guide that we have on our website though. Also, if you want a chance at having a VOD reviewed, be sure to subscribe on our website at skillcap.com.
We also have tons of Radiant Smurf commentaries. We have Radiant players walk you through exactly how to have the most impact possible on every map, in any round, in any situation. They're just super helpful to see in real time what goes to your top tier players at. As you mentioned before, it's also backed by a rank improvement guarantee. And the reason we do that is because you're just that confident that a service works. And if it doesn't work, then you shouldn't pay. So what are you waiting for? You got nothing to lose. Head on over to skillcap.com and get started on your way to that rank that you deserve. So I hope this video helped you guys recognize some of the bad habits that you're making and how you can start to work on those. Some of these really go overlooked, and if you want to take your game to the next level, you should incorporate what we discussed today in your gameplay. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And that's all for us. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.